Hi, my name's Joanna, welcome. This is our, our chair yoga um, class together. I'm starting sitting on the floor here. This is, okay, I think this will work. Okay, great. Um, thank you for joining in and being patient. Um, hi. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I just did a whole intro in that other video and that has already gone into the ether. Um, but now we're back together and I will continue where I left off and hopefully we can piece all the thing, all the bit, all the bits together. Basically, I was just explaining, um, about chair yoga and, um, how I'm, how I'm choosing to teach that style of practice. So, um, I'll often teach the whole practice from a seated position. Some teachers will choose to, um, have the students stand for a portion of the practice and use the chair as a balancing aid. That is totally optional and depends who you're working with in your class. Some of you might find that you're actually teaching a predominantly mat-based class, but you just have the odd one or two participants that are going to be using the chair for specific exercises. And then the sorts of t classes that I'm teaching currently or pre-COVID were uh, senior classes. So we were spending the majority of the practice on our chairs. So for me, I found that created a better sense of flow. It was less disturbing getting people on and off chairs. And um, I, I felt like I could really set a more meditative tone for the whole class. So that's how I've been teaching. And um, that's what I'm gonna kind of demonstrate today. Um, sorry, there's so many things popping up right now. Okay, hi, so nice to see so many of you. I'm Joanna, if we've never met before. I'm a teacher um, of six years now, and I did all my teacher trainings with your Yoga Flow, and um, it's been a privilege to continue teaching for them and being on their online platform and connecting with you guys. So um, I'm gonna move to my chair now, and we're gonna work through a mini uh, sequence. For your, your, your chair yoga practices, you will need, of course, your comfy clothes. And you'll see behind me, I have a chair. And um, I also have a soft foam block, or you could use a blanket here. This is if you're working on like harder concrete floors or wood floors where it could be a little chilly. Today, we're, work, we're working on the upper body. So the lower body is gonna be a little more still. So you might find that having a cushion or a blanket on the floor for the feet um, provides a little more insulation. And then you'll see on the back of my chair, I have a blanket. The blanket is for Shavasana at the end of practice, but also if you are just focusing on the upper body, some of your students might find that having the blanket over their lower body creates more weight and grounding and warmth. So those are options to use for sure. So I'm going to step over to my chair now. We're going to get into a little practice together. Uh, we're going to be focusing on the seven directions of freedom for the spine. So we're going to be looking at flexion and extension. We're going to be looking at lateral flexion. Uh, so side right and left. We're going to be looking at rotation. So twist right and left. And we're going to be looking at axle extension. So that long lengthening through, through the crown of the head. So I'm gonna try and uh, create this very small sequence in this short space of time that includes all of that and gives you an idea of what the practice is about. So feel free to join in or take notes, whatever works for you, and uh, I'll be on my chair. Okay, so I am going to be putting the blanket over the legs and I'm going to be placing my feet on the uh, chip foam block. And when you come to your seat, you want to encourage participants to sit right in the middle of the chair so they haven't got their back resting in the chair, if at all possible. What this will do is establish that rooting and grinding through the base of the pelvis and will also encourage participants to recognize where their torso is in space lift up through the crown of the head, which will engage those back muscles. It will help create more space for the vital organs. So um, all good work. And also if they start to really think about dropping their shoulders back and down, they're starting to encourage better posture. I'll also check in with the students that they have their feet in parallel, hip, dist hip distance apart, and that their toes are nicely spread wide. 
Students can keep their socks on, that's no problem in this practice. However, you do want to um, encourage students to not grip through the feet, to let the feet settle and sink into the earth. And then blanket can go on top. And then when you're ready, you're going to encourage students to close their eyes. Some students will, some won't. You can also encourage students just to bring their gaze down to the floor. And then choosing whether the students want to rest their hands to their thighs, maybe on the lower belly, maybe one hand to heart, one hand to belly, whatever is soothing, nurturing and grounding for them at the start of their practice. Let the eyebrows be soft, let the shoulders be soft and start to receive breath. Continue to feel that sinking sensation of the pelvic bowl into your chair. This is your anchor. And start to observe how your upper body feels in space. How are you receiving your breath? Does it feel wide and full? Does it feel short and sharp? Is the breath more in the chest or in the belly, in the back or in the sides of the rib cage? And just curiously start to cultivate awareness in the upper body, scanning through the arms, the chest, the spine, the belly. And just noticing where needs a little more of your attention. Where needs a little more of your love. And then set that as your intention and focus for this practice. To show that area, more space, more compassion, more breath. And let's see if we can work out any of the stickiness, the tightness. We can iron out those creases. Let's take a deep breath together, in through the nose, out through the mouth, and again, in through the nose, out through the mouth, and one more cycle, in, and out. And then return to a steady, natural breath. Start to wiggle your fingers and toes. Start to roll your wrists, maybe your ankles, and move your head from side to side. Feel free to take a nice, big stretch, reaching your arms up as you inhale. And as you exhale, floating your arms down. With your hands to your thighs, inhale, lift your shoulders up. And exhale, roll your shoulders back and down. And again, inhale, shoulders up. Exhale, shoulders back and down. And one more cycle, shoulders up. And exhale, back and down. Take an inhale and sweep both of your arms into the sky. Interlace your fingers and then turn the palms up. Breathe into the top of your lungs. As you exhale, chin to chest, round your spine and bring your interlaced hands forwards. Press the hands forwards as you round your back and breathe into this C shape in your spine. Use your inhale to roll up through your spine, lifting your head. And again, exhale, round the back, chin to chest, Drawing the belly button towards the spine. Breathing into those discs between the vertebra. And rolling up through the spine. One more cycle, rounding the back, chin to chest. Press the arms forwards. Breathe into any sticky webbing between the shoulder blades. 
and then rolling up through your spine. Keep those hands interlaced now, hands behind the head, and then lean your head into your hands. Roll your shoulders back and down, let your elbows be wide. Lift your chin and your chest. Start to look towards the sky, engaging in a gentle upper back bend. Breathe into your heart here, breathe into your chest, and only go as deep into this as feels good for your breath. Use your inhale to come back to center and your exhale to lower your hands back onto your thighs. Take a big breath in and a big breath out. Lovely. Inhale your right arm into the sky and lean over to the left. You're just engaging in a gentle side body stretch here, nothing too wild. You're keeping the base of the pelvis anchored down and you're sweeping the breath up and down, the stretch you're feeling in the right side of your body. Lovely. Use your inhale to come back to center and exhale to lower your hands. We'll do the same on the left. Inhale, left arm up. Draw your lower ribs in and lean over to the right. You can always choose whether you're looking forwards, looking down or looking up to your top arm. See what feels best on the neck. Use your inhale to come back to center, engaging your obliques and then lower your hands to your thighs. Take an inhale breath, tilt your tailbone towards the back of your chair. Bring your belly and chest forwards and lift your heart. This is your seated cow pose. And then exhale round the spine. This is your seated cat pose. And again, inhale, come forwards, lift the heart, lift the chest, breathe in. You might slide your hands up your thighs. Exhale, round the back, maybe sliding your hands towards your kneecaps. One more time, sliding hands up the thighs, looking to the sky. And exhale as you round. Come back to neutral, take a breath in. And take a breath out. Take your right hand onto your left thigh and your left hand resting somewhere to the back of your chair. Take an inhale, lift through the crown of your head, nice long spine. Exhale, start to turn from your pelvis. So you're turning your pelvis first to the left, then your belly, then your rib cage, then your chest, and finally your head. You're in a seated twist. With every inhale, you're lifting through your spine, lifting through the crown of your head. And with your exhale breaths, you may continue to add a little more twist. See how that goes for you. Your inhale is for lift, your shoulders are relaxed. Your exhale is for twist. We'll do one more time here. Inhale, lift. Exhale, twist. Inhale all the way back to center and exhale, land your hands. Inhale, left hand to right thigh, right hand behind you on your chair. Lift your spine tall and then start that twist from the pelvis. The reason we turn from the pelvis first and then the belly, then the chest, then the head is so that the entire spine is integrated into this twist. So often in twists, we start from the belly button. We engage from that place, but we've missed so much of the spine doing that. Really engage that turn from pelvis all the way up to the crown of the head, and then encourage your students to envisage the breath running down that spiral in the back. Nice, and then use your inhale to come all the way back to center and exhale your hands onto your thighs. Take an inhale breath here, and as you exhale, bring your chin to your chest, slide your hands down the fronts of your legs, rolling forwards and down, and allowing your hands to either rest close to your ankles, your feet, or maybe to the floor. And let your head completely relax. Give your neck a break. Maybe shake the head side to side, yes and no. For some students, they won't come all the way down to the floor. You might find some students prefer to prop their forearms to their thighs and keep looking to the floor, especially if they have high blood pressure. 
to come back up, you're encouraging the students to press down into the, to the feet and roll up through the spine, keeping the head heavy and the arms dangling. The hands will just slide at the legs and the head will be the last thing to lift. Make sure this is done really slowly, this ragdoll cycle, so that we avoid any dizziness. Again, inhale here, lift the spine tall. And if students want to take another round, chin to chest, slide the hands down the fronts of the legs. Relaxing forwards, weight heavy, maybe knuckles to the floor. Give them a little bit of time here to really breathe into their back body. And then press into the feet to come on up nice and slow and steady. Lovely. Take a big breath in at the top and a big breath out. And then inhale both arms into the sky. Exhale, bring your, your arms into goddess. So you've got your elbows to the same height as your shoulders and your hands are facing forwards. From here, you're gonna inhale, squeeze your shoulders and elbows back and lift your chin and chest towards the sky. And as you exhale, bring your fingertips and elbows to touch, chin towards chest. Again, inhale to open, lift the heart. Exhale to close. Remember, you're always just encouraging your students to go at their pace for what is enough for their breath and their back in the moment. Hands and elbows coming back together. And then you can bring your hands to your heart Take a big breath in, big breath out. And just one more piece I'll add here is eagle arms. You can do that by inhaling arms wide into a T. Exhale, wrap the right arm over the left and either hug your shoulder blades or encourage students to wrap forearms around one another until the hands touch. Lift the elbows high wherever you are and bow your chin to your chest. You can stay here, breathing deep into the back of those shoulder blades or option again to work a little flexion and extension for the spine. So inhale, lift your chin and your chest and your elbows up. And then exhale, pull the belly button in, round the back, encouraging the elbows closer to your thighs. And again, inhale to lift, pressing down into the feet, looking towards the sky. Exhale to round. Again, you can encourage students to go slower than this if that works better for their body or to pause anywhere along this pathway that feels good, somewhere they might need a little extra time and space. And then come back to neutral and ravel those arms and dangle them down the sides of the chair, maybe shake them out, maybe roll the shoulders again and then let the palms be face up on the thighs. It's a nice opportunity during the practice just close the eyes, be still, see how the back is feeling, see those areas we've engaged, woken up, and notice how the breath is responding. Give moments like this in your practice, like we do when we stand in Tadasana. And we'll take that eagle option on the other side, so inhale, arms into a T. Exhale, left arm over right. Again, either hug your shoulder blades or if it's possible, wrapping forearms and hands touching in eagle. Elbows lifting up, chin to chest. Take your first few breaths just like this. Still lifting out of the back of the chair so you're not rounding into the back. Of course, if the students are fatiguing, this feels too much, they have that option of the back of the chair. But for the majority of the practice, if you can, keep encouraging students to sit tall. And then option to add movement here. So inhale, lifting the heart towards the sky. And then exhale as you round. Not only does this create a wonderful flexion and extension through the spine, but it also helps the students connect to their breath. So they should only be lifting the elbows up with the fullness of their inhale. And then they should only be lowering their elbows down as they exhale. You're encouraging the students to move with their own breath cycle. So everybody in the practice will be going at a slightly different pace, which is wonderful. 
Last one, rounding forwards. And then coming back to neutral, unraveling those arms, hands back on your thighs or down the sides of the chair. And just shake out the arms, roll the shoulders, palms face up on your thighs. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Letting yourself have a moment here to reset, to establish, to notice. How are you feeling? What areas have you woken up? What areas of your upper body feel stimulated, lighter, brighter, more spacious? And then bring your hands to your heart, Anjali Mudra at the center of your chest, bow your head inwards and just send yourself some love and gratitude for carving out this time in your day for your self-care, for your practice, for your well-being, for the health and longevity of your spine. One sealing breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. Okay, so that was a very short, quick fire uh, demonstration of um, a chair yoga practice for the upper body. Of course, usually those classes are at least an hour long and we would spend the whole practice moving through the upper body and then the next practice maybe we would work on the neck and shoulders, maybe we would do one whole class just on uh, the lower body. So uh, there's lots of room to develop interesting practices that uh, are themed around either specific areas of the body, or you could start to introduce like chakra work, uh, you could introduce more breath techniques, all sorts of ways you can make those classes interesting and engaging for your students. So I really hope there was some interesting pieces in there that you could maybe incorporate into your classes. Again, even if you're not teaching a predominantly chair yoga practice, you might find that um, it is helpful to have a chair available for some students. I am uh, going to leave a link in uh, the description or in the comments. It was in the first video, but I think we lost it. <laughs> um, but I do have a full progressive chair yoga series. It's, um, I think it's six, six lectures and they're full classes. They're full like one hour classes and it's available on Udemy. And for you guys, uh, at your yoga flow, flow family, I've uh, given you guys all a, a huge discount code. So the whole uh, program will be $24.99 Canadian and you have it for life. So once you've purchased it once, you have it for life. And it's a progressive series. It runs through specific areas of the body in each class. And uh, it finishes with a really lovely uh, self guided self massage. So I will leave the link for that. I'll also leave the link for um, my website, which also has individual chair yoga classes um, on there. So if you are curious in uh, learning a bit more, uh, you can head over there and please feel free to leave some comments or questions you may have regarding the practice. I would love to connect with you and thank you so much for being here and watching and I really hope that you have a wonderful day and continue to enjoy these offerings on our platform. Thank you all. Peace and love. Take care. Mwah.